Good morning, this is Craig Jabeur and I'm going to be presenting the primary marbling kit that we sell on the website marblingforfun.net. Um, the kit is very popular, being primary colours you can mix them into variations of colours. The most popular kit we have and we've been doing this kit since 1992 um, in slightly different packaging but it's pretty much the same as it as it's as it's been for some some time um, so to present to you it's the actual a6 box okay that's the actual kit that comes in the post um, it's a very compact kit this will give you a thousand to twelve hundred prints give or take uh, using the colors in this kit it's going to last you three to five years give or take depending on how often you use it uh, but the duration of the paint is going to last you a long long time uh, the lid is the tray. So this is the tray we practice with. Um, you can obviously use your own trays, like your baking trays, your tea trays, your catheter trays, and so on. Anything uh, about an inch deep is perfect to use. But we thought, you know what, it's a nice packaging system, and the white tray will allow you to see the colors when you're marbling with your paints. So this is the base tray sorry the lid of the tray which is um, ideal for modeling which we're going to teach you a few techniques in a few minutes um, so that's the lid inside the kit comes with your full step-by-step -step color instructions which is in a printed uh, a4 format um, and they are very simple to follow uh, this kit's been designed from ages three and up so parental guidance is necessary obviously for young kids but adults love this kit because it's very simple to use these are water-based paints non-toxic child safe okay you need to dilute the paints one part paint one part water um, and the directions will teach you all of this information we also go through various problems you may face with modeling because it's a very uh it's a traditional paint uh modeling techniques and so on but the paints uh, will do different things in different temperatures and so on so we have reasons for those problems and the solutions for those problems to solve as we've been doing for the last 25 30 years um, so we've taken you through all the stages without you having to make the mistakes um, but if you make some mistakes it's a learning curve and don't worry about it it's a process and we all go through them uh, we are here to support you through it, your whole experience with marbling that's why we say uh, your journey begins with mobbing for fun and I'm Craig Jubair my wife Christelle Jubair will be helping you through your stages of your uh, Modeling journey. Okay, so to go through the paints uh, They are the primary colors. So you get your uh, your regular blue All right, uh, these are concentrated paints you have to dilute them down 50 part water 50 part paint and that is tap water so you don't have to use deionized water, soft water, like we used to do back in the day. Uh, we've found a, a whole new system, and of course this is ideal for anyone to play with. Um, it will teach you the directions on the actual pot itself, so not to worry if you forget. These instructions will be repeated on the pots as well as in the instructions, um, and they are easy to obviously read. Uh, so that is your primary colors comes with black and white with tints for tints and tones And we'll go through tints and tones in a, in a bit later when we mix some colors for you just to teach you a few techniques on how to um, Mix colors you can google mixing colors if you wish on uh, Google and obviously color charts will come up and they'll teach you exactly the same process So if you know if you want a specific color uh, You can mix them exactly the same these paints are uh, not opaque they are transparent so that means you can do double marbling and the transparency of the colors will show through each different color itself so the layers of colors will show off and the mixture the size we call it uh, which is what the paints float on this is called we call it floater powder but it's cellulose um, it's a plant extract that's organic okay nothing we use is toxic this is all uh, child safe um, so this is powder form uh, this is one teaspoon which is three and a half grams all right from your blue spoon which comes in your kit and that is equivalent to mixing with one liter of tap water okay so that's very simple to do you boil your water near boiling point 
on your stove, obviously be bearing in mind safety with kids, uh, parents do this. Uh, you throw in, you literally throw it in and you whisk it immediately. As soon as the powder goes into the water, it dissolves. You leave that overnight to settle, okay? Once it's settled, cooled down, uh, you can re use it up to three months. So that it has a duration of three months per teaspoon. You get 12 teaspoons in this, that's 12 liters of fun. That's equivalent to 36 months of marbling uh, with a small tray, of course. So if you wanna use bigger trays, you use more liquid. Okay, so that is the actual um, process of mixing, mixing your size. Um, and of course the pipettes come with your kit, there's eight, um, and you get to mix uh, your variations of colors. So I think there's one extra. Uh, <laughs> so eight pipettes in your kit, um, and we'll go through mixing colors in a few minutes. So very, very simple structured system. Uh, very easy to follow the instructions in your kit. Uh, there's alum. Now alum is the last thing in the kit. Okay, this is what we pre-treat fabric and wood with. Uh, it is not necessary to use alum with paper marbling because these paints stain fibers naturally. Um, and you can print any natural fiber or texture. So there's not just paper marbling here. There's fabric marbling, leather marbling, wood marbling. There's stone marbling, shell marbling. Anything that has fibers or textures will work extremely well. And we'll be printing onto paper and fabric in this session. So that's your alum. This will give you six liters of which you can reuse. So don't throw it away. Okay, it's economical. Everything we use is economical. We can keep using it for up to a number of, uh, of, of months. So basically, just for read the instructions, it's all there. So we're gonna just put this away. So we've got our colors. Now I have a few people who have hiccups on opening the paint. So we're gonna go through that with you. Very simple box, very small, compact, put away, easy as that. Um, opening the colors, okay, it comes with a tappet pull. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that by pulling it and then extending it round. And we go round and round and round. If you have a problem pulling this, and it breaks, sometimes these break, you simply take a pair of pliers and you pull this other section away from itself. So it's a simple reversing the other direction, which opens this way, okay? So you're now opening it the other way around, but using a pair of pliers. So that's the options. Once it's off, it still clips onto the actual um, I, uh, little uh, bottle. So that is the yellow pigment. This you'll hear clicking on whenever you finish for the day. Okay, so this is the liquid paint we use. All right, it's concentrated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dilute it, 50 part paint, 50 part water. So you can get another container, any container you can use, um, film canisters, bead, uh, bead containers, anything that'll have a lid that seals shut. We do sell these on our website if you have uh, no resources of getting hold of them. So we're gonna use tap water, which I've just popped into a glass bottle. Um, and we're gonna use the pipette itself. I'm gonna simply push the back of the pipette down and we're gonna simply put it into the paint and let go. Now the paints will just suck up the paint. We put that into the container. Okay, get a fresh pipette and do the same for your water. So into the water it goes, All right? It's one mil of paint, one mil of water. And we're gonna put that into the actual container. And that is your simple dilution, one part paint to one part water. And that will keep up to two years if you don't use it. Obviously you will be using it and you'll be using it quite quickly because it's really good fun to play with and put your water aside. And that's how we mix the colors. So you do the same with the red, yellow, blue, black, and white into their different color pots like we've done here. 
Okay, and then we're gonna mix colors within these colors. So I'm just gonna add my, give it a bit of a mix. Obviously it, it's water-based, so it needs a bit of a mix. So make sure you continue to mix your paints at all times. I'm gonna just pop my yellow back into the yellow. So that's the one yellow sorted. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix some orange, mix some green, and mix a bit of teal. Now teal is a beautiful color. Um, and just to remember, this base, um, which we're using at the moment, is the base of the marbling kit. So we are using both trays to marble with. And this keeps all the uh, pots of paint upright without having to fall over. Okay, so there's safety in this, in this technique. Uh, now we're going to use the yellow as our base color into another pot. So down in goes the yellow. I'm going to do the same for another one. So we're going to have two option colors here. So the yellow goes down first. The second, I'm going to use a drop or two of red, which is going to simply turn that color into orange. The science of color mixing is great fun and we have orange in a split second. And the same goes for blue to make our greens and you can make all variations of greens depending on how much blue you add to your yellow. And that is simply mixing your greens. Because it's a primary kit and that's the reason why it's so popular, all your colors are mixing yourself, okay. Um, if we're gonna mix a bit of teal, we're gonna start with blue into this empty container. Uh, and then we're gonna add a couple of drops of black and a couple of drops of yellow. And we're going to arrive at teal, which is a stunning color. Now you can have variations of teal as well. And there's your teal sorted. So you can continue mixing your colors as many as you wish, okay? There's no limitation whatsoever here. You can have an infinite range of colors. Now to even make these colors even more attractive, you can pastelize them by mixing them with white. So all we're gonna do is add white to any color and you'll get the lighter version of that color. And those are absolutely gorgeous colors to play with. So just an example, I'm gonna use um, a little bit of blue in fact, you start with the white, you add your white first to the pot, uh, as much as you're going to be using, more or less. Right, so now we've got two pots of white. This one, I'm going to add one or two drops of blue, and that will make my next color. I need another pipette. So my magic hands are going to hand me a pipette. Why, thank you, dear. And this becomes a light blue, which is a stunning color sea blue and we have tints of every color so you can understand the variety you're going to be able to achieve with this kit um, right so to mix we have pre-mixed the floater liquid we discussed earlier the cellulose and we're going to use the uh, the base tray which is the shallow tray um, we're going to pour in which has been pre-mixed, okay, you can keep it in a bottle like this. Just make sure that the bottle is clean from milk or coke or whatever it was um, completely before you pour your liquid back in here. Now this, as I mentioned, could be kept up to three months. So write a date on your bottle when you've mixed it and that will obviously give you a, a much more accurate. Now we're going to just pour it in. Now you can Pour right up to the brim of the tray. This will give you a lot more flexibility on marbling onto paper especially. There we go, to the brim, which allows for your pickup prints much, much easier. Now, of course, this liquid can go back into this container whenever you've finished for the day and to continue using the same liquid. Even though some colors sometimes sink when you start and the color, uh, the floater liquid of cellulose discolors or clouds with some pigment in it 
it doesn't matter what it looks like the actual uh, floating liquid or the size the cellulose will be able to be kept uh, in use for up to three months so it doesn't matter what it looks like okay but it starts off like this um, right so we're gonna just move out some tools we're gonna move this around this way um, and you can see what I'm doing okay awesome um, so the beauty about this paint is its simplicity um, the colors will always create cells all right so the the idea for this is to drop one drop at a time not squirting paints out by pushing the back of the pipette too hard it'll squirt out and sink so the idea is to be as gentle as possible in fact if you take the pipette like that drop it on you will still get exactly the same results because the paints are pulling themselves down okay so that's not even touching the back of the pipette um, you can knock it on the back of the finger this releases a small drop of paint and then it's called a stone marbling technique and you can continue doing this with different colors now normally your first color is your dominant color your second third fourth and fifth colors are less paint that you put in so that it doesn't overwhelm the surface with pigments okay now I've only used um, some white some blue and some some black three colors now if you think of any design three colors is a sufficient amount of color with regards to tones and, and contrast to design any pattern um, the tools we're going to use today is a is a basic stylus <clears throat> which is just a, a stick to draw with for freestyle patterns um, the little uh, rakes we've made with nails and wood are half an inch rake okay it's a small version but we do make bigger ones and we'll teach you how to use that and we've got a very uh, very sharp pin rake which is six millimeters apart and that we'll play with as well it comes with this little gadget just to keep it safe from the kids okay so just to show you three samples one is freestyle and all I'm gonna do is follow the dots uh, match them all up and that is literally a couple of hearts so as you go through a circle you'll create a heart very easily it couldn't be easier than that and that's called freestyle okay uh, you can do twirls which is awesome fun for the kids and now we have a combination of some twirls in your design and that looks fantastic now I'm gonna change this pattern before I design print it this time I'm now going to use a rake okay now you can rake across it if you wish or you can set the design into a chevron pattern by making lines okay so the lines are going to go up and down now you can do this manually or you can do this with a rake so we're going to go up and then back on itself down and then you have a very similar pattern called a chevron design you can do this as many times as you like so if you want to go the opposite direction now we have another chevron and then the opposite direction and you have got two different chevrons over there now if you'd like to use the pin rake you'll get a much finer result uh, because they are six millimeters apart and all we're going to do is drag across those colors Get this beautiful pattern called a non preel pattern um, and that is a delicious pattern now if you are having a, 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 a project with the kids you can use the stylus the stick to add paint to your colors now that is an easy thing to do you simply give this to your kids take the pipettes out and pop the color in the paint on there will just drop on the water surface and now we've got a little circle with just a little bit of paint on the edge and there's still paint left on there to do a few more all right so very simple they can now do a floral pattern with that design so we're going to go through the circle like we did before get a heart another heart on this side 
and now we're going to drag it to the center of that little circle and twist the center. Now we have a floral pattern. The material has been pre-treated with the alum like we discussed in the kit. This is going to sit on the surface of the tray. Immediately you'll see the pattern and we have a complete finished result. So that pattern with all the detail is completely stained into the fabrics fibers. All we need to do now is rinse this under a tap, dry iron it so that you can wash this in your washing machine on a gentle cycle uh, or hand wash, it's up to you. So wash as you would wash wool, about 30 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius. Um, washing machine is fine with that. So that is a beautiful work of art. Um, just to show you how beautiful this is, we are going to put it on a piece of paper for you so that you can see the full detail of what has just been done. Let's do a quick paper modeling print um, using our primary kit. So we've just done a fabric design, <clears throat> excuse me. This time we're gonna do a different technique. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag lines of color. So the line is simply what's dropping out of the pipette at the moment in time. And we're gonna literally put that on there and just drag it out onto the water's surface. Um, so we're gonna get a line of color, okay, which compresses themselves into lines. It's so fascinating to watch this um, mesmerizing process. You're gonna love it. So each uh, little pattern is now lines of color. That was a bit of teal we mixed up earlier. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of red in there just for fun. Now I'm not using much paint at all. That is such a lot, uh, such a minimal amount of color coming out. Um, all we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna do uh, a little Christmas tree. It's just great fun. We're gonna be zigzagging with our stylus. Up and down we go. I'm gonna draw a line from one side right through. And we have a Christmas tree. You can do your quills at the end of the tree. Well, there are so many variations. Every design you make is a unique work of art. There's neither right nor wrong way of doing it. You can change that completely into something different in a few seconds. So we're gonna just print that onto a piece of paper. This is the 160 GSM paper. It's been cut in half, it's an A4 we sell and curl the paper because paper is not as porous as fabric. So all you need to do is roll it on from one side to the other side to avoid air pockets. And there you have a stunning work of art, which is your little Christmas tree. Now the paint is very quick to dry, even on paper, but I wouldn't suggest rubbing it. That's just to show you that it's drying. And what I do is I put the paper down on kitchen paper, kitchen towel from your kitchen, or you can use newspaper, but I find this is nice and absorbent. So all we're gonna do is put that face down onto the, as you can see, the paper is saturated. The sooner you do that, the quicker, so that the paper doesn't crinkle too much. And now that is taking the liquid off the paper, allowing it to dry much quicker. Okay, so that's mobbling onto paper. And there are hundreds and hundreds of designs which you can vary into thousands and thousands of designs because each one is a different entity and a different application and so on. So the whole world will have to stand still when you're doing mobbling because there's Time disappears when you do modeling. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience to enjoy. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be on 
the next video soon so if you'd like to subscribe to our youtube or if you'd like to join us for a fast our facebook private group it's free to join for support and lots of ideas and sharing you can join us there uh, we are here to support you in your modeling journey so take care and goodbye for now